Hello everyone. This radio that's here in the foreground is rather significant. Um, it's got quite an interesting history, which I shall explain rather soon. It is a model VE301. The name, or should I say the model number, is rather significant, especially the 301. Or if you just sort of take off the last digit, 30 and 1. 30th of January. 1933 is the um, date that Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany. This radio um, is known as a Volksempfänger, um, or translated to People's Receiver. Forgive me if any of you are German, and I've mispronounced it. I'm not German. But um, this ra radio is part, was part of a greater plan. It was a rather affordable receiver, a more affordable receiver than an, um, what was available back in the day. It's a simple three-valve um, regenerative receiver. It made it affordable for the average person, um, or middle-class working person, to afford a radio. Approximately two weeks' wages, you can get one of those. Because the grand plan was, the more people that owned one of these things, um, the greater audience there would be for the propaganda that was broadcasted. Because back in Germany, um, after Hitler came in power, they pretty much t took over from what I understand, and forgive me if I'm wrong, um, all the radio stations to broadcast propaganda, because one way of keeping the um, people under control is to take, um, I don't know, take hold of the media. So that way you can put across your points of view what you want people to know into the minds of the average population so your view becomes their view so you hide what's what's not in your best interest for the population to know so yeah pretty much Nazi Germany um, all the media was run by the one party one person or a group of people or a committee basically had control of all of the media well Funny that, eh? But anyhow, let's not talk about German history and um, propaganda, but it is a relevant part of the history. I'm going to continue talking about the radio. I got this yesterday. I haven't powered it up as yet. I figured to give you an introduction, sort of in anticipation of the next part. So I'll just give you a little bit of a, let's say, a, I don't know, a rundown of what this thing is. Um, try not to get too distracted by what's going on in the background there. Anyhow, we've got three knobs over here in the front. We've got the um, band switch for long wave and medium wave. We've got the tuning control. It's a nice little vernier. Goes from 0 to 100. See? And we've got the regeneration control. Now, um, as you can probably see there, it's... There's no wavelength or frequency marked. I'm not sure what the rele relevance or irrelevance was. I suppose it's a regenerative receiver. Things can change depending upon the level of regeneration or whatnot. So probably didn't make much sense to mark out the uh, frequency. Down towards the bottom, you can see the model number, VE301. And above it, what looks like an eagle with, um, I don't know, radio waves going around. Listening to recordings of... Hitler. Not something I really want to do. I don't really understand German or what he's on about. But considering how animated and wah, 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 maybe that has some relevance. But anyway, that bird looks rather nasty. Up the top we've got the speaker. As you can see, the grill is relatively intact. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to... Oh yeah. Let's see. Do I have enough light here? No, I don't. It's all right. I'm going to spin this thing around as I'm using one hand to hold the camera. Don't want to drop the radio. I'm going to have to, um, well, there'll be a scene swap coming up about now. All right, we got the back of the unit here. Um, a previous owner had replaced the power cord with the non-original. It's just some standard plasticky thing, molded. I have no qualms about replacing that with an Australian one. Um, the unit runs on several um, different voltages. You can either choose 110, 130, 220. Um, 220 is close enough to 240. I believe the valve should run with intolerance, so it shouldn't be a problem. As you can see here, the model is VE301W. 
there are several models made, ones with dynamic speakers, a real cut down version which had um, only two valves. Um, this one's got a high impedance speaker which I shall show you when I eventually get to pulling it apart. It's made by Siemens. Several different manufacturers made these things. Um, Siemens being one of them, Telefunken another, Bosch. Who else? I can't think of any at the moment, but I'm sure by the time I do the next um, video, I would have found out. The um, power switch is um, knackered. Um, it probably came apart towards the back. Let's see if I can rebuild that. Um, it's got some instructions there in German. It's got the valve layout there. From left to right, we've got the rectifier. The output tetrode for that drives the speaker and a triode which is for the regenerative detector. I've got a little instructions over there about how to hook up an antenna and how to where to hook up earth. As you can see, you can always hook it up to your water tap for an earth and use one of the taps off the coil for an antenna. See it's got a wee little end fed. Show you where that is. I've got enough light here. Let's just wait for that to focus. Um, yeah the various taps got little banana sockets on the left side it says KURZ, which, well K-U-R-Z, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, or KURZ, or however or whatnot. As I said, I'm not German, so please forgive me. It's for short antennas. LANG is long, for long antennas, and there's E for Earth. What else have we got down here? We got some little label, possibly a warning. Now, um, I had recorded this scene previously but I use an expletive to describe Adolf Hitler possibly an understatement using that expletive but I'm trying to keep this rather family friendly some people are maybe a bit sensitive to expletives but anyhow I'll explain why because um, it could be a warning because um, it was a crime at the time to listen to foreign broadcasts as I mentioned in the previous scene um, these radios were built to distribute um, propaganda to make it easier for people to listen to propaganda. And the last thing Adolf Hitler and his cronies would have wanted was some sort of opposing viewpoint. So it was fully and absolutely and totally discouraged to listen to foreign broadcasts, lest you have, uh, as a minimum, your radio confiscated. Um, you could potentially be put into jail, serve some other, I don't know, There'll be other consequences towards the end of the war when things were getting rather chaotic. Um, something as simple as listening to foreign broadcasts can um, result in the death penalty for some people. Because, well, if one thing World War II and the Nazis were known for was their total disregard for human life. Um, down here is a little model plaque. I'm um, not sure if I showed you that previous to my rant. Um, yeah, so that's a rough rundown. As, as I mentioned um, in the opening, there is a lot of history to this radio. Not much of it pleasant, unfortunately. But um, if you found any of that rather heavy going, um, you'll probably be pleased to hear that the following videos are going to be purely technical. Just um, pretty much showing you the insides, my restoration of it. Um, yeah, horrible time, interesting radio, but, well, those that do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Anyway, I'll leave you for now, of enough of my philosophizing, and, um, yeah, just give you something more to look forward to in my next installment on this radio. See ya.